Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoever's. Today is the 10th day of October 2019. Today's morning message is, why do I go to church? I'll be honest with you, this is the reason why. So, good morning, God bless you. Um, you know guys, the Bible does talk about not forsaking the gathering of the saints. Okay. One of the reasons why we go to church is because in the Old Testament, you know when people wanted to go to one direction in life, people would go sometimes to the temple um, to seek the Lord, to ask for favor or, or, or to seek confirmation on this or that subject. You know, and, and sometimes we pray, we pray uh, and ask God, Lord, what is your will? But we don't hear anything in a sense until we get to uh, church. And then, you know, Pastor Dylan has a word from the Lord uh, to give to us. And, and, you know, that's what church is. Church is uh, having a word from the Lord to the people in the congregation. And the funny thing is Pastor Dylan, or we can give one word and it can and the lord can speak to the to the people listening 10 different ways so uh, another thing why we should not forsake the gathering of the saints or you find a good bible believing church is to get there early you know i've been i've been my brother chewy um you know we we're we're we started a, a prayer ministry and we get there about an hour before church starts and we pray. Nothing special. Um, I think yesterday we got there about ten minutes before five, six, and we we got into prayer. And the next thing you know, it was already six thirty. Um, but I tell you, I, I got there pretty tired. I got there kind of drained. But after the prayer, again, um, I was I felt like I had more, at least some more spiritual strength, right? To whatever I was going through, and then and then the worship came, and then you just worship the Lord, and, and you know you know and just remind you of how faithful and how great and how awesome our God is, right? And um, so then the message came, and it was on First Kings chapter two, and it was the death of David, and, and David told Solomon's son, "Hey, David." I mean, David told Solomon, hey, Solomon, um, you know, I want you basically get rid of Joab um, because, you know, uh, he did this and did this to me during my, my reign. Uh, and then he got rid of some other man. Um, then he got rid of his older brother. Um, King David had had scourged the whole land and found this this woman to lay with him. Not sexually, but it was like a maid servant. And the Bible says she was the most beautiful woman in the land. Um, at the end of at the end of Second Samuel, we, we or at the beginning of First Kings, we see uh, again uh, before the reign of Solomon that the older brother gathered Joab and Ebenezer or Abinadab, some one of those names to 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 basically um, anoint him as king. But God had a different plan. God wanted Solomon to reign. Um, and we, we know that word, the prophet Nathan went to, I think it was prophet Nathan went to David and, and reminded him, didn't you say Solomon would be, you know, king, reigning um, over uh, Israel? And he said, yeah, he's a wife. And because your other son, uh, the old, the younger brother, Abba Solim, was being anointed king knowing that the father was basically on his deathbed. And then uh, <clears throat> they anointed, basically they made King King Solomon king. Um, and, you know, God, he, God showed him mercy and showed him grace uh, to Solomon. And Solomon himself gave mercy um, to those other three people. Like David warned Solomon, hey, before I die, make sure you take care of these people. You know, and, and and then he says to him, in in, in in essence, you know, you know, surround yourself with these people. And he and he gave a name, one of the 
one of the families that had really um, during Absalom's uh, rebellion had you know showed him mercy and sanctuary. You know, and the Lord was speaking to us at church yesterday, and the Lord was saying basically uh, to us at church yesterday it was basically surround yourself with people who are godly, who are going to encourage you, uh, who, who, who are going to uh, uh, you know. Make sure, be careful who you hang out with, basically, right? And then, and then he says also too, you know, be care, watch out for this person, this person, and this person. And you know, you know what the Lord was telling us yesterday, basically was telling us, hey, you know, there's some people in your life that need to go. You know, they're 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 they're, they're a hindrance. You know, they're they're. I know you love them. I know you want to keep them around. I know you want to help them. But at some point, listen to the Lord. And again, it's a warning. You wouldn't get these warnings unless the Lord was speaking through pastor to speak to you to an answer of some kind of prayer or dilemma you go through. And that's the reason why we gather to church. The reason why we gather for, for service is to hear a word from the Lord. Whether it be a warning whether it be an exhortation, whether it be a direction, whether it be stand still. Uh, you know, we all go through uh, many, many trials in life. You know, and God, God knows the future. So if he, if he, as you go through the Bible and God is warning you, and then you look at your, you look at your life in retrospect and you say, okay, Lord, what is it that I need to get rid of? What I need? To, what is it that I need to hold on to? What direction would you have me? Right? What direction would you have me? And you know that's the message for today, guys. I know. I know. I'm going to get another call again. Um, but you know that's the message uh, concerning concerning the Lord, concerning uh, fellowship, concerning. Um, uh, you know, there's some people in my church I do not get along with. I don't tell them that. I don't, I, you know, I, I think they're very, very, you know. But I still go to church because I know God has called me there. And, and many times, guys, many times people don't go to church because, oh, I don't like that person. You know, oh, I can't, I can't stand that person. Hey, you go to church because God called you there. And that's the only, that's the only, that's the only reason why you need to go to church that's the only reason why you need uh, to to be there you know to, to have fellowship because not everybody again remember K king david was king david but there was a lot of people in his court that he basically did not get along with who betrayed him but god still was protecting them and in him and guiding him whether it be joab whether it be abba salim whether it be uh Abner, whether it be uh, uh, Solomon's mom, Bathsheba, you know, the, you know, the, there was a lot of contentions and trials. But, but David made sure that even though he he wanted and desired to serve the Lord, that he was being faithful. That God has called him to be king, and God him called him to write the book of Psalms and the and the book of Proverbs, um, um, and to be and, and to be a basically. A, a light and a salt to the nation of Israel uh, and to be a righteous king over the nation. God has called you to be a righteous king in a sense, the king of your home. You know, there's many people, uh, you know, be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you marry. You know, if, if, if you notice that the, 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 the person you're with, again, is children rebel and rebel and, and, and you try to encourage them i'm just like okay lord you know why are you allowing this and then you just kind of think to yourself okay lord you know what plans you have for me you know maybe you're closing the door here you know and you have to be faithful because you want to surround yourself as we were as we were listening yesterday with people who are going to build you up people who are going to encourage you people who are walking the same direction you know Go, not going again not going with the current in life because you know that current is very broad and the Bible says that many follow that current uh, and, again in a sense for their own demise you know um, and pastor Dylan says any dead fish could flow downstream it takes a, a, a born-again fish a born-again Christian to go against the flow 
to go upstream, to to uh, uh, go against the current, you know, because this world is headed to hell in a handbasket, you know, and you don't want to be yourself being unequally yoked, you know, with people who, who might call themselves Christians, but you look at the fruit and you see the things, you're just like, you know, I, I, you, you kind of you, you kind of take a, a, a stance, you know, on the outside and you just kind of look. And then they ask the Lord, Lord, reveal to me what's going on. And then the Lord reveals to you and you're just like, whoa, you know, do I really want to be entitled with this business or with this church or with this relationship or with this program or with this outreach? You know, you just you just got to be able to be in tune to what the Lord has for you. And at the same time, remember this, guys. We go to church to hear a word from the Lord. I mean, you're basically get there anticipating God's going to speak to you. Um, and He does. I mean, He speaks to all of us um, through our devotions. But remember, uh, you got to prime the pipe, in a sense. you got to be in prayer. Uh, you have to be uh, reading your Bible. Uh, you got to be crucifying the flesh. You know, uh, we all give excuses of why... Uh, again, we feed the flesh, but in, 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 in the long scheme of things, you know, it is better to do the will of the Lord than to do your own will. Because in the long run, you know, God's will is always better than ours, right? And in knowing that God's will is better than ours, shouldn't we lay down our will um, to Him? And then again, be in fellowship and then be in the Word and then be in, 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 in prayer uh, with those believers that would encourage you um, to uh, to do the right thing. You know, uh, God, the Lord, told David told Solomon, you know, if you follow his commandments, if you seek his statues, if you seek the Lord, you know, there's a blessing behind it. You know, all will be well. God will reward you uh, for, the, for, for, for what you're doing. Because, you know, God is faithful. Um, and he wants us to be faithful. And the only way we're going to be faithful, guys, is if we listen to the Lord. And how are we going to listen to the Lord? If we read his Bible. If we uh, go to church expecting to hear uh, directions from your, you know, you're your, your basically your, your captain in chief. You're your, your the Lord, head Lord or, you know, the head of the church. You know, say, Lord, what is the plans for you? And sometimes the plans for you is not really do anything but get right. Do right and get yourself in the, in the in the right spirit and basically in tune to whatever the Lord has because guys uh, in, as the end days gain speed uh, you want to be a light and a salt to those around so may the Lord bless you be girded be strengthened the Lord is coming I'm telling you guys he's coming quickly be about the Father's business